All right, Shia LaBeouf. It's been a while. Let's do this. Do it. Just do it. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Yesterday, you said tomorrow. So just do it. Make your dreams come true. Just do it. Some people dream success. Well, you're going to wake up and work hard at it. Nothing is impossible. You should get to the point where anyone else would quit. And you're not going to stop there. No. What are you waiting for? Do it. What's he grabbing? Just do it. Yes, you can. Just do it. If you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Shia LaBeouf, for now on the stream mindset. Ooh, look at that flex. Good morning, everybody. It's been over a week since I last drummed. So I was cooking. I forget what I was making. It's like stir fry or something. And burned my hand. So I was like, I need to just let it rest. Don't want to irritate the skin. So let's get back into it now that we're all healed up. Uh, turn up the volume. Cool. We're going to warm up with a chug variation. And you can find this link at the top of the screen. There's literally over a thousand free play-alongs. They're all YouTube videos. Neatly organized here. But under the chug variations playlist, there's a bunch of videos. I forget how many you have access to right now. Because there's a new play-along releasing every day. I don't think you have access to like these bottom like five or so. But the one I want to play through is... Threes with fast fours. Was it the oil that burned you? No, actually it wasn't. Uh, good question. And good morning, Nathan. Um, so <laughs> it was um, the pan itself. So um, no, it wasn't stir fry. It was something else that involved baking. So normally the skillet that we use, um, I just put it on top of the stove and I just hold on to the handle and stir things around. Totally used to doing it that way. But we actually baked whatever was in it. I forget what we made. Oh, is um, shrimp orzo, uh, a pasta. Um, but anyways, so we put it in the oven, and it was in there for like 30 minutes and took it out. And I kept like, remember to use an oven mitt, remember to use an oven mitt when I was like stirring it afterwards. And I did. Until I didn't. <laughs> the very last time that I uh, went to like stir it, to like serve it up, I grabbed the um, handle of it and was just like, oh, well, that hurts, but... Yeah, we're good. We're good. I appreciate it. So my hand is is good. It's it's still a hand. It didn't fall off. Um, it only took uh, maybe about three days to like fully heal. And then I was like, okay, I want to just give it extra time because it was like tight. The skin was just like um, very taut. So I was like, I just need to stretch it out, just relax it. And then this weekend I got really busy with um, stuff that I was adding for the store on YouTube. But anyways, thankfully we're all good. Um, that could have been bad. Okay, so I want to warm up with this. Because it's been so long since I played, I want to... See, that's the story I was talking about. So it's actually like it adds in um, the merch. So I think it should, on the live tab, I think it actually shows the shirt that I'm wearing right now. Oh, good. Hey, uh -huh. it's me. Remuted. Yeah, so it's got the ghost note on there. So that took me a long time to set all that up because I had products but like i had to input them all into a different type of store than i was previously using on um squarespace but anyways that's probably not very interesting to you let's warm up okay so this is chug except it's slow threes fast fours ew been a while <laughs> how do i drum again what's this drumming thing yeah my left hand is like super out of it right now i forgot how to drum Ew. 
It's like at that awkward tempo where like I can stroke it or I can bounce it on the fours. left hand can't necessarily stroke it today. We're getting back into it. Yeah, so Nathan, um, on YouTube, so you can stroke this, like if I were to take off hit my stick if I were to take off my thumbs which makes it like really harder to play but um, it makes it so that you only use your wrist when you're doing this you can stroke it or you could do like a finger French technique and play all that way it's harder with these extra heavy sticks like if I switch to normal sticks it'd be so much easier but I don't I like the chop sticks so I always drum with them but yeah my um hands are are feeling it. Let's stretch. It's been too long. My favorite one. First drum teacher taught it to me. Haven't seen anyone else who um, knew about this unless I showed them. But you take your sticks, you pull in, you pull in, and you push out. Oh, wee. It feels good. Mm. It's always weird when you take a break from drumming, like for a few days, when you come back into it, it's like your hands just like, are like, wait, what do we do? I forget. You do traditional rotate, hold here, rotate and hold there for like 20, 30 seconds, but I don't do that anymore. Now here, we're gonna stretch. When I was um, working on my doctorate, my, um, in like, doing my residency and whatnot. So when I was at the school and teaching classes and taking classes, I did not have time for drumming. And so like I went weeks and months without drumming. Whenever I'd pick up the sticks again, I was always just like, wow, <laughs> I can't do anything like half as good as I used to. It took a long time to get back into it again because they're so inconsistent with practicing during that time. Which is funny because like I'm in a school of music, I'm getting a, a PhD in music education. Like you'd think it'd involve music, but no, it doesn't. It's all research. Um, anyways, stretch in there. So breaks are detrimental at times, but you can always come back to it because at least you remember how to practice and like what to do. And it's just a matter of like getting the stamina back up again and the hands all ready to go. So it was a bummer, but. It was probably good to take a break, came back, and was like, all right, I want to drum again. Now that we've done all that research stuff. All right, thumb to thumb, so I'm stretching here. Definitely need to do um, the stretch and massage routine after more than a week off. It's been, what, eight, nine days? Something like that? Thankfully, the hand is good. Got caught up on all those merch edits in Shopify. I actually got it set up with YouTube and Instagram, and I'm currently working on setting it up on TikTok as well. So. Yeah, the control balance on three strokes is so much, um, it's like, it makes it so much easier. Yoinky spoinky, didn't know you drum. Yas. Uh, on my YouTube, on here, since you're on Instagram, on my YouTube, but if you also drum, there's literally over a thousand free playlongs that I made. If you go here, so we got the drumming, gaming, and computer science stuff, but under the drumming stuff, if you just click here, then there's literally over a thousand free playlongs to help with drumming. But yes, I do drum. My PhD, master's, and bachelor's are all music education. I've been drumming for like 26 years, something like that. Good morning, King Draco. Anyways, now that we've stretched, now it's massage. So we're gonna do massaging on the muscle and around it. 
and just loosening things up and then we'll get back into just chopping out this is going to be a shorter stream because i don't want to overdo it because it's been so long since we actually last played more than a week just feels like it like i have no control when i first get back into drumming i'm just like wait how do i hold stick Finally, someone got your name right. What do they new normally say? Draco? Is that what they say? Draco? King Guru Draco. Is that how most streamers pronounce it? <laughs> uh, thumb. Massaging. And then fingers massaging the backside. Ooh, wee. Oui. This is the hand that I burned, so this one is the, yeah, the like, ah, King Dracula, ah, ah, ah. I had uh, somebody else, I was doing Subnautica streaming that over the weekend, and somebody said the same thing that I actually pronounced their name right, and most YouTubers don't. It, was, it looked like a Japanese name, so I read it with the Japanese pronunciation and nailed it. Mm. Slowly learning Japanese. Duolingo's like, I beg to differ. Anyways, I'm going to go screw up my feed, subbing to anyone I see. You do you. You have fun with that. <laughs> I think you can actually like clear your whole history of your feed. If you go into YouTube, um, there's like a history tab on the left side one of the options and i think you can clear the whole thing so if you want to do a complete reset it's like similar to what you can do with um TikTok as well you can really mess up your feed and be like all right show me all the weird stuff all right let's try this again we're gonna try and get into faster force Ew. So the left is having the balance for those fours. Well, we actually found unintentionally the um, the gray area between the stroke and the bounce. So that's actually good to know if like if I wanted to work this one up. But I just want to chop out. I'm not practicing today. I'm just playing things fast for funsies. You gonna do that? Go for it. I don't know why, but fours always felt better when I played traditional with the left. I don't know why. It just did. Not that they feel good right now. My fours sound um, not great. Probably the best way I can say it and keep it family friendly. They sound like buzzes. So those are control, controlled fours, bounces. Um, controlled is in air quotes. <laughs> those are bounce strokes. Man, my hands feel so weird today. This is 
fun grid variation. It's fun to play fast, or at least attempt to. I like it. I think that was a set of hundred. Yeah. I want to make sure I don't jump up by 20 and then have my hands explode. It's hard to do that. I'm, I had a couple of in there where I was like accidentally playing three strokes instead of fours. Let's attempt it at 120, and then we'll actually play some other stuff that my hands can hopefully do. Stay tuned. We'll find out. Woo! Press my foot pedal. That's funny. So you were drumming after you showered. I just showered as well. Unfortunately, I can't say the same thing. I also sometimes use um, this thing. So it's a percussive massager. So I'll use it on my like shoulders and whatnot. To kind of like give myself a massage if they're too tight. But you can actually use it on your forearm as well. So like if I turn this on. And then kind of use that. That can also help loosen things up. Or just kind of like relax. These um, are helpful. For that but like for me because i sit at my desk so much because i'm just like editing all day or like writing music like just to be able to just like use that on the shoulder don't use it on your neck though use it on your shoulder or like to do it back here like <laughs> i'm getting vibrato in my voice having one of these is super helpful I was just using it before the start of the stream because my shoulders were too tight anyways let's try this again one more time It's fun. I like it. So that is chug with threes and fast fours. There are a bunch more chug variations. There are a bunch more chug variations and you can find them all linked at the top of the screen. JaredO'Leary.com slash drum. There's literally over a thousand free play alongs. Mm. Yeah. Um, one, I take a look at how you set up your um, ride. So for me, I actually set mine up weird. Maybe I'll show this tomorrow when I'm back on the kit. Let me see if I can do this. So, you can sort of see it. It's actually upside down, so I can get it lower. Um, so normally, like you'd have it, like, oh, it's like stuck, like this, so that it's pointing up, but I have it hanging down, so that way I can actually get it lower. Um, so I could show that tomorrow on the drum kit stream, but it's um, helpful to have it that way. So that way you can have your arms nice and low and relaxed and hanging here, as opposed to like this. Like there's a tendency for some people to have their ride too high. And like the way I had it set up, it was kind of like that. And I was like, this just doesn't um, work for me because like you're saying, like if you're playing jazz, you have your arm way up here. But if you just bring it down, then you can just sit and just play nice and relaxed. The least amount of motion possible whenever you're moving around just makes it a little bit easier for you. So maybe I can show a close up of that tomorrow. Um, but yeah. Anyways, let's play something. Um, let's do grid. Let's do cheese. Cheese on one. We're going with a classic. And we are not starting off at 162. Think so. Let's go. Ooh, wow. Got some cheese in the chat. It's a cheesy comment. Nah. <gasps> Hicker. Yikes. Also known as stutters to some people.
All right. Let's go fast. Well, faster. We'll get there. 10 clicks faster. And then 10 clicks, and then 10 clicks until my arms spontaneously combust. Little rim shot there. Extra flavoring, the seasoning on that. Enjoy. The alternative ending to um, Cheese on One Grid. Let's put random rim shots in there. Yeah, my left is definitely feeling that break. The nine or so days off, my left hand's like, nope, not gonna play super fast today. Oh yeah? I'm gonna at least try it. I think I can get to 160 and be okay. Normally I think I'd be able to do 170. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, folks. This is going to be it. The breaking point. Do it! Yes, you can! Cheesy. So I saw a question on Reddit that I answered that um, was interesting. So the person was playing flam drags, so they're asking about how to not crush the diddles in the flam drags. So it was like kind of hard to demonstrate the way that it was being played, but um, the diddles were a little bit crushed. Um, so there's actually three pieces of advice that I have for improving any kind of rudiment. If you're like crushing it, slurring it out, whatever. First one is set your metronome to like 40 beats a minute and just sit with it for like five minutes, 10 minutes, and then go up one to five clicks, preferably one, and then sit with it for five to 10 minutes and just keep repeating that over and over and over until eventually you get to a faster speed. But if you sit with it slow, then that will make us so that you can actually play it faster with better interpretation. Second thing that I recommend is you can actually use grid variations. So grid variations, uh, move accents, permutate them, and make it so that you can play any rudiment with the accent anywhere before, after, on it, whatever. So like on the screen, we have cheese. So it makes it so that you have cheese on one, cheese before, and then, and then cheese ooh, after an accent. But you can also play entire grid variations that have those in there as well. So for example, there's uh, cheese before an accent, there's cheese after an accent, etc. There are 26 different video variations for a triplet right here. And then if we go back to the page where all this is neatly organized and go to the 16th notes, there's actually even more for 16th notes. There's 32 just for cheese. Now this goes for every single one of the rudiments, um, or rather, this goes for many more rudiments on here. So we have like flam fives or buzzes or Swiss drags, all triplet. But then we have a bunch for 16th notes. So there's like over 800 grid variations that are linked at the top of the screen. Now, another thing that I actually recommend for working on this is either fast, slow, fast, or slow, fast, slow. So this one, it starts off slow. 
starts at 40 beats a minute, it goes up to 60, and then goes back down to 40. And so this is just going one click at a time for a total of four counts, and then it starts to speed her up, and it gets to a faster tempo, and then you can get to your fastest, which is 60, it holds it there, and then it slows it back down. So you're basically doing like cheese, and slowly speeding it up over the course of a couple minutes, and then you slow it back down again. Etc. So those are three different ways that you can work on improving the interpretation of any rudiment or even just the speed of them. Um, speaking of cheese, before and after an accent, let's go ahead and play those. But let's let's do it with a uh, flam five. Let's do flam five after, and yeah. So flam five here. After, ah, 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 flam five after an accent. There's also the one, two, four variation, but we're gonna do four, two, one. 160, no, we're gonna start off at 120. Timestamps, jump to BPM. One, 20. Let's do it as flam sevens. <laughs> something else that I can bring up. There's a paradox with drumming. If you want to get faster, you actually have to practice slower, like significantly slower. So let's say your maximum tempo is 160. Great, practice it at 40 and go up one click at a time. Slowly refine your technique, make it so that you can play even more relaxed than possible, or at least than you thought possible, at a slow BPM and gradually work your way to a faster speed. And that's how you can slowly speed up your hands. Maybe five to 10% of your time, spend it like praying, not praying, <laughs> spend it practicing faster than you can. So like try it at 170, but the majority of your time, at least 80% of your time should be practicing stuff slow. So that way you can slowly speed her up. It's a weird paradox that a lot of uh, beginner drummers don't necessarily understand, but trust me, as somebody who's been playing for 26-ish years, I promise it works. Gotta refine it slow to play it fast. Yes, my left is still feeling a little bit tight. A little bit. That's okay. It's to be expected. Hmm. Maybe that's something I could talk about. something I could also talk about too. Trying to share little tidbits, bits of tids. Ew. Getting some water, nice. I'm getting some plus seven energy. Sometimes people in one chat will be like, who are you talking to, bro? Well, I've got four chats up. Just cause no one's talking on one doesn't mean they're not on other. Let's try 160. Nathan's reminding me to get some water myself. Good idea. Let's go 160. Uh, 
um, brain fart, and then my left hand like got all tight. So went went. Hmm. I forgot what I was gonna mention. What was I gonna talk about? I had to do with taking breaks, and then that reminded me of something else. I guess that's something I could mention. You got to work on flam fives or serious fun. Oh, I hear you. Flam fives are great. They're uh, a fun little rudiment. Try the sevens versions with three strokes. Flam sevens. Instead of. Those are cool. Um, they're hard. <laughs> or do flam nines. <laughs> Four strokes. Uh. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that one, but that's just me. Hmm. One of the things that I've noticed is that uh, a lot of younger players will actually spend like the bulk of their time practicing just on the weekends, but it's actually better to spread out your practice sessions over multiple different days. So you have time to sleep on it where you can process it in your brain more and just have more time spent throughout an extended period of time practicing that doesn't make sense hmm. so instead of doing like an hour on saturday and an hour on sunday if you actually spent like 15 minutes every single day spread out and just like make those very focused sessions then you can actually get more done and make more progress than you would with let's just like do a bunch on the weekend and then take a break where you like slowly get worse and then you do a bunch on the weekend where you get better and then you slowly get worse but if instead we spend 15 minutes of like intentional time every single day, you'll get a little bit better. Granted, if you make that an hour, two hours, three hours every day practicing, then you'll get significantly better than you would if you're only doing 15 minutes. But the 15 minutes is better than doing like a bunch just on a couple of days. So find some time to practice, whether it's like just using wrist work or using like um, mental practice, which I talk about in a video on my YouTube channel, etc. Like there's many ways that you can actually get in those reps over a consistent period of time without having to actually have sticks in your hand and being noisy. A little bit easier said than done if you don't have access to an instrument. Like if you play timpani or marimba, you might not own a marimba or tempano, etc. Um, Yes, flam fives, those are good, I like them. I I don't wanna overdo it with my, my hands today, but I do wanna keep playing a little bit more. Hmm, what do I want to play? So many options. Um, and this is a video that I was talking about with like how to practice quietly, but this one is like how to like practice in your head. So that's a good one. Let's do... Let's do cheese before an accent. That one I mentioned earlier. That one's a fun one. I like it. Let's start off at 120. Timestamps. Description. Let's go. Wow. Bum, 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 bum. I switched to like cheese on two. Whoops. One thirty. Ah, ah, ah. Go. This is the dance intermission. The 
if I let it tap off. don't believe me i'm the one who wrote it that's what it's for it's like yep we're gonna add in five seconds of dance break between every single one of these three play alongs that's a joke i look serious but i'm not This one actually feels more comfortable. My left hand is a little off, but we're going to make it a little more off in a moment. Hopefully it doesn't fall off. ooh -wee. like a six inch six inch accent on one of those right unsub dang it i lost another one no at least use the play alongs they're free So earlier I was doing the cheese on one variation of this, which was at the top here, this one. But this basically prepares you to be able to improve the third measure like that. Where it's got the, oops, the second measure, I mean. Where it's got the accent on two. Um, what speed am I at? 160. Let's try 170. So cheese before an accent is just basically a whole grid variation that helps you work on measure two. Cheese after an accent helps you work on measure three. Yeah! Um, let's play. Let's play something else. There's a bunch more grid variations. 346 triplet ones, 477 16th note ones. Wow, Jared, you create a lot of content. No. Uh, where is it? There it is. It's hiding. Let's do the good old classic. Triplet diddle. Let's see how you pronounce it. Uh, there's an inverted diddle version, but we're going to do normal. We're not going to play it at 89. Thank you, though. Let's start off. 160. Ah, ah, ah. Ew. Let's go up a 20. Well. Don't be afraid, wife. Yeah. Okay, here we go.
it's more fun to do that this way. And on an actual drum with better rebound. But that's hard. It's fun. It's a good one. Okay, so last BPM, 200 is actually going to immediately tap off. More drumming content now i actually have the ability to link to my website like this boom and then it goes there i've been hard at work a lot of little mini projects whoops that's my foot pedal let's go back if that's too fast for you that's okay you can slow this down to as slow as 40 beats a minute timestamps in the description and there's literally over a thousand free play longs linked at the top of the screen i know i keep repeating that but it's because people join in randomly. And I turn these into little clippy clips. Um, let's play one more. My hands are starting to feel it. Let's do Hast mich mich fragen. Uh, yeah. Clam drags. I'm sure I totally mispronounced that. Rammstein. Du. Du hast. Du hast mich. All right. Final one. It's so slow. There's the number. I can number sometimes. Depends on the day. Some days my numbering skills are outnumbered. Another 20, just dropping out, just for fun. Since it's been like nine days since I played, I just wanna have fun. Chopping out this morning. Last thing, float drags. With flam drags. Seventy. Ah, ah, ah. This will probably be the crash and burn point. I have my wife standing by with the fire extinguisher. She's ready to put out flames. Oops. It's all messed up. Hey, let's do 180. This is 
gonna this is gonna be it. The final frontier. Let's get ourselves plus seven in energy. Flawless, not a single mistake. Nope. Intentional. Certainly had nothing to do with just being tired after nine days of not drumming. Flawless. Cool. You can find that play along. Underneath chop stuff, under float drag variations, there's a few more variations just for that. There's 41 chop exercises. There's like 800 and some odd grid variations. There's like about to be 50 some odd charts here. There's a bunch of technique exercises. There's 140 base exercises. All sorts of stuff to keep you busy for a while. I hope you enjoy it. If you're curious what kind of like sticks I use, if you go to the lessons, boop, click here. These are books I recommend, have used, like studied with, especially during my undergrad and whatnot. Um, we've got it organized for like, there's drum kit, mallets, rudimental, timpani. Here's the hardware I use, the pads I'm using. The sticks I'm using when I do these streams are the chopsticks, the Hardeman hammers. Excuse me. These are affiliate links, so I get about 4% back. So thank you for the people who have used it. It does help out. Making all the pennies. Woo! Um, all jokes aside, it does actually help. But yeah, I'm going to get set up. I'm going to play some Subnautica. They actually go to slash game instead of slash drum. You can find all of the gaming stuff neatly organized here. But Subnautica, I'm... I should be able to beat it today, I think. And then on Thursday, I'm going to do creative mode, and then we're just going to get wacky with it. We're going to see what kind of goofy stuff we can build. Um, maybe I'll, I'll capture myself a, a Leviathan. Who knows? Stay tuned. But anyways, if you don't want to go to my website, that's fine. You don't have to. If you go to my YouTube, boop, you can actually find all of the drumming stuff neatly organized under the home section. I create gaming and computer science stuff. You probably don't care about those. So you can just click on the header and then it just shows you the drumming stuff. And YouTube's algorithm should just recommend you drumming stuff if you just watch the drumming stuff and it should ignore all the gaming stuff. Maybe every now and then it's like, hey, are you interested? Eh? Eh? But yeah, the for you section should also do that. It should just show you drumming stuff. Fingers crossed. Otherwise, YouTube, what happened? Do you need more sleep? I'm going to call it here. I'm going to get set up, do some Subnautica. I appreciate everybody stopping by. I hope you all enjoy your practicing, and I hope those play-alongs help. And yeah, goodbye.